ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم يرجعون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال كنا عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أخبروني عن شجرة تشبه أو كالرجل المسلم لا ينحات ورقها صيفا ولا شتاء وتؤتي أكلها كل حين بإذن ربها قال ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما فوقع في نفسي أنها النخلة ورأيت أبا بكر وعمر رضي الله عنهما لا يتكلما فكرهت أن أتكلم فلما لم يقولوا شيئا قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هي النخلة فلما قمنا قلت لعمر رضي الله عنه to his father قلت لعمر يا أبتا والله لقد وقع في نفسي أنها النخلة قال ما منعك أن تتكلم قلت لم أركم تتكلمون فكرهت أن أتكلم أو أقول شيئا قال عمر لأن تكون قلتها أحب إلي من كذا وكذا رواه المصاري Respected brothers and sisters in Islam Last time we started a new topic It was requested And the topic was how to connect our behavior with our aqeedah, iman, or belief system. And we went through some detail in speaking about the most important part of a faith of a person or a practice of a person is aqeedah and iman. If it is correct, then your whole function and your whole behavior is right. But if it is not correct, you know, and that is where it comes. Al-Aqaid, the belief system which you, which take you to the actions which are defined as shirk and actions which are defined as al-mubtada'at like we have repeatedly learned from surah number 107 that the people who do not believe in the day of resurrection they are given certain characteristics and among those that they repel the orphan harshly treat the orphans they do not feed the poor. Whenever they stand in the prayer, they do it for name and fame and for showing others. <coughs> and as a result, in the verse of verse number four of Surah number 107, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fawaiyulmusalli. Because all these reasons, their prayer and their worshipping is not going to be beneficial for them. On the contrary, deepest down in the hellfire, there is a way they will be thrown into that. Why? Because they did not have the pure aqidah. They did not have the pure belief. They did not understand what is shirk. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah number 4, verse number 116, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَيُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ 
Allah is not going to forgive. If you assign partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you die without the repentance, you know, in Arabia it was a mushrik society, the society of pagans, but they turned into the believers when they received the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah will forgive your shirk if you change your behavior. And according to shirk, Quran, shirk is of two kinds. A shirk al jali the obvious shirk, which is done by worshipping idols or worshipping anyone or anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And probably all of us prevent ourselves from that. But the shirk which is deceiving, which is difficult to prevent, which many people unconsciously continue to commit, that is the shirk called Arriya. فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَمْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاهُونَ They are the people who are told woe to the worshippers who are heedless in their prayer and they are the one who are performing the prayer to show to others not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reflection of it is on their behavior see in addition to what I have already said last words if you don't do things for the sake of good pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it results into making you stingy, greedy, impacted by material aspects of life. That is why the last verse says that even the neighborly needs, you know, neighborly needs, petty things, small kindnesses, people do all the time. You know, even those they with the hair. Why? Because they are not running their life according to the basic principle of aqeedah. That if your aqeedah is correct, you will be working for the good pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we recited the words from Surah Ibrahim. <coughs> Excuse me. Last time, <coughs> where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing to our, our mind a parable you know, for a true and correct faith and aqeedah. Asking, Alam tara, did you not see? Kaifa barab Allah, masalan. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings an example of kalima tayyiba. What is kalima tayyiba? It is the article of faith. When anyone decides to believe in Allah, you declare your faith. And that declaration is a very honest commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying that no one, you know, la ilaha illallah. That is the nafi, the negation of every single deity of any kind. You know, whether it is in the shape of the idols or in 
the shape of the name and fame and status or position or wealth or anything. When you say to everything, La! And you say the deity is no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. That is the kind of negation which is required in our day-to-day -day life and which is required from us to refresh our mind. Because many a time we drag ourselves into certain material aspects of life and we forget our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the example of that kalima in the glorious words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like we call kalima tayyiba same word Allah used shajara tayyiba ka shajara tayyiba it is that pure it is that goodly word if you take the example it is a kind of tree which is well grounded you know a tree cannot be you know broken or will not fall with the strongest wind if it is well grounded asluha sabit in the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is well grounded and the branch of it is in the heaven so the connection begin here in our heart when we put the seed of Iman and that tree is the actions and al-amal salihah the good deeds which we perform so our connection with the source of our ruh that is the entity in our body which makes us alive ruh is May the Amri repeat is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more spirituality is inculcated in your mind and in your heart and performed through your limbs of the body, your connection or the connection of earth with the sama, with the sky becomes strong. Connection of a believer becomes stronger and stronger at every step of the way with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the reason when in, in Egypt, when I used to study in Al-Azhar University, one of these students <coughs> wrote a thesis for the PhD on one hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is known as Hadith al-Wali. You know, in that hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is hadith Qudusi, says that when we become that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I become his hand with which he walks. I become his feet with which he walks. I become, I become, I become the limbs of the body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I become those. Why? Because you have brought the limbs of your body in line with the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this seed which is, which is in your heart, the ground, the well grounded, the asl, the, the root of it in our heart and the branches of it go in the sky, meaning they continue to elevate you in the, uh, in the world of the spirit and in the world of spirituality and in the world where you are so very conscious about every moment of your life that you do not want to fill any moment of your life with anything that brings you nearer to the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your focus and your struggle of your life is on one thing that you gain the good pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you never forget that to do that I need a role model and my role model is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
if it happens like that, tuti ukulaha kullahin bi'idni rabbiha, then you become the reflection. You become the misdaq, as they say in Arabic language, the true reflection of the purpose of your life. The purpose of our life is to be most kind, helpful, beneficial and productive member in the human society. The purpose of our life is to continue to think about improving this universe and making it as a better place for ourselves and for our coming generation. So the Aqeedah and Iman is the main thing, the Muharrik al Awwal, or you can say, Muwajjih, Walikulli Bijhatun Huwa Muwalliha, the greatest motive we take the Muslims to become, you know, keeping away from the ghetto mentality, going to the universal thinking that all the humankind are from my siblings because Adam and Eve were our parents and all the religions which were conveyed by all the prophets and messengers are the branches of Islam which is started with Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. Your horizon will be widened and then you will see to the humanity in a very different light. Then you will understand that the Boko Haram, ISIS, or any organization who have hijacked Islam, they have no touch of reality in their behavior with the Quran or the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, in his teaching circle and in that teaching circle the prominent companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and all the others were there and there were youngsters there were youth like Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu radiallahu anhu and the Prophet asked this question. And Imam Bukhari has reported, referring to Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, very interesting story. Think about this story. This story tells us the feelings of the parents. How parents want their children to become the best in this world. And the feeling of the children who are raised in proper way, how they follow the etiquettes, how they do not want to humiliate their elder elders in a gathering. That is the story. So the story goes like this. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu says, we were sitting with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, Tell me, addressing the entire group, about a tree. And here Imam Bukhari puts two things. It is similar, it looks like, or it is like a Muslim man. Karrajul al-Muslim. Tell me about what tree is that? This tree is leaf will not fall neither in summer nor in winter but the fruit of this tree it is always given it's a fruit tree which gives its fruit kullahim always by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now this young man says that it came to my mind that that tree is the dead palm tree. And nobody was speaking. 
He particularly mentioned, you know, like our youth may say, Ankar Abu Bakr Siddiq, you know, and my respected father, Omar Farooq, they're not speaking, they're not saying anything. And all these prominent companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are sitting, nobody is speaking. So how can I? You know, that is the etiquette of the youth. So he did not say, so he said, فَكَرِهْتُ أَنْ أَتَكَلَّمْ I did not like to speak over these elders who were sitting there. And when nobody said anything, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is the dead palm tree. And when we left the meeting, he said to his father, Ya Abata, oh my dear father, Wallahi my God, it came to my mind that it is the dead palm tree. So Sayyidina Umar Farooq, that's the feeling of a father, you know. He said, why did you say? What prevented you from speaking and saying about it? So his answer was, I did not see you guys speaking. So I did not like to speak over the elders, you know, that is the etiquette he was speaking about, or to say anything. On that, the father's feeling came out. And Sayyidina Umar Farooq said, it would have been by far much better, as far as I am concerned, that you should have spoken about it instead of giving me this, that and nobody has spoken about it. So brothers and sisters in Islam, all this are the reflections in various aspects of our day-to-day -day life, of our faith and our Iman and our Aqeedah. And that Iman and Aqeedah is like that fruit tree which never ever stop giving the fruit. Like in one of the hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about a believer, a Muslim. What kind of a Muslim are we? We have to think about it in the light of that saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, the example of a Muslim is like a fruit tree. People throw a stone on it and it gives them the fruit. <coughs> that is the characteristic of a believer. A negative comes from every direction, you turn it into the positive. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah number 41, verse number 34. <laughs> the goodness and evil can never be equal. Goodness and evil can never ever be equal. Two evil will never make one good. See? You cannot kill evil with the evil. You have the reflection of that. Look around us. <coughs> you know, look around us. What happened after September 11? Look around us. How many countries were destroyed? When people try to kill evil with the evil, that's not the divine way. The divine way is Ejfa Billati Hiyahsan. You repel evil with what is good. Any negative comes from anyone. If we face it with a positive behavior, which is taught to us by the whole Quran, you know, and we mentioned this example many times before. From Surah number 25, read the verses 63 to 74, characteristics of the believer. One little part I would like to bring to your notice as, as, a, as a reference and in the context of what we are talking. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّهِ مَرُّوا كِرَانًا That is the characteristic of the true believer and the people who have the true You know, what is love? It is vain talk. 
It is vain action. It is, you can say, anything that has no benefit, material or religious or spiritual or social or of any kind. And if you pass by that, Marru <laughs> Kirama, you have to avoid it honorably. You cannot say a negative word. If somebody is speaking here, you say, oh, he is calling me name, I'm going to call him name. That's not the Islamic way. You have to find most beautiful way to deal with the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to differentiate. The point of distinction of a believer is you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the source of everything and you have a duty to convey that message to the rest of the humanity and you cannot do that with your word only words and action both. On the contrary, by the actions you speak louder than words, we have to understand that. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that example. Unfortunately, the time is over. We will continue to learn these aspects from the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But I have one request to you. That whenever we learn these concepts, Billahi alaykum, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make an intention that you will translate them into your behavior. If we start doing that, we will change in our own communities. There is a request for dua of shifa and recovery for brother Talat Abbasi who suffered with a heart attack last week and he is very weak. So please brothers pray for him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him his speedy recovery from his sickness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have another request now. Hafiz Salman from Pakistan, he is in ICU. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him speedy recovery to and may Allah grant his speedy recovery to all the brothers and sisters who are suffering with any kind of disease and to us from our internal and external diseases and may Allah guide us to translate our faith and our aqidah in our behavior. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَاءِ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الغاب لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصح وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة المعين والتابعين وتابع التابعين والسلف الصالحين وأولياء الكاملين وعلماء الراسخين إلى يوم الدين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المؤمنين اللهم وفق حكام المسلمين إلى كل ما تحبه وترضاه من القول والعمل يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء من أول أموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنهاء عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيبكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم وأذكركم يستجيب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأهم وأتم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقل السلام